It's almost Christmas. Four days. Four days? It's yeah. the 19th today. It's not Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> you are, for the benefit of uh, watching Chains talking in the future, I'm talking the now when we've actually recorded it. But yeah, it is what it is. At least we have Christmas decorations up now. The outside, You're the last person in the, the UK, outside, I think. The outside you? decorations have been up for quite a while. There was there was technical reasons why we didn't have them up. Inside, we thought it was Scrooge's bloody house. I can be called anything apart from a Christmas <laughs> I, I do love the Christmas. <laughs> there was a reason, though, wasn't there? There was, yeah. There, did, there was, there was a did, gen- did the builder come and do it? No, 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 no. There was a genuine. Should have done it, is he? He has, yeah. He's, he's there today. There was a genuine. Well, he's there two days ago when we were recording this. And there's a genuine reason for me, right? Because of all my little quirkinesses. Christmas does not start until the Pogue's Fairy Tale in New York has been on a radio. But and it you, probably has been on the radio many times, it's not what you, you're listening to. And you usually hear this around the first week of November. I did not hear it until the 18th of December. I had radio stations on, granted most of them were talk sport listening to the football, but I had Heart and Heart Christmas and Capital, none of them. I've heard every other Christmas song a yes, dozen but, and a half times. But your journey from home to gym to work is about 35, 40 minutes and then on the way back to same, you do know there's 24 hours in the day, but so they can't. probably played it when you weren't in the car. But it doesn't start until that song comes on. So it came on on the Sunday before Christmas. Did it? Christmas is, uh, is on now. So you waited till then, you put your decorations out. Yeah. Wow, good job yeah. they played it then, because otherwise um, poor family wouldn't have any Christmas decorations. And, right, anyways. when you're putting up Christmas decorations, and it's the, the day of the World Cup final, um... <sighs> Oh, that was that football, is it? Sorry. And, and chicken curry Saturday has been transferred to Sunday because we were we, we were out uh, with um, oh, a yeah. few people. Um, I wanted a beer. And there was no beer in the house because I don't drink that much. So I went to, I think it was Asda. And you I, wanted a beer, you're right. You're going to take a picture of you. <laughs> and I bought an 18 uh, pack of uh, Foster's. <coughs> still be there next Christmas. This time next year, they're still going to be there. There'll still be 17 left. Fosters. <laughs> Could you have bought any uh, worse alcohol? There's nothing I remember wrong. Fosters from the day when I was a student. But that's what I, I associate when I came over to the UK first and started coming over in kind of 2000, 2001 onwards for long weekends. That was the, the go-to beer of choice. Yeah, I wasn't really strong over there, Fosters. That was probably why. Bloody feel strong right. at the moment. Um, no. That's and a... maybe that's just, a, you know, when you, when you go back and you have something, it kind of brings back good memories. That's what we What did. Foster's brings about good memories? Well, you know, the giddiness <laughs> and the youthfulness and gonna, being able to drink all day and I'm all not, of these things. I'm, um, not, I'm not sure the word Foster's are good memories where we come to. Yeah. Yeah. Three, I'll tell you a quick story. The f- uh, four of us came over originally one Thursday in, I, I can't remember what time of year it was, about 2001 or so. And we'd never been to Cardiff before. And we were just coming over to have a, a long weekend and we were staying with um, a few girls who is now my wife. Uh, um, and we touched down in Cardiff Airport, you know, and it, I don't know why, but we had this idea that as soon as we touched down in Cardiff, we were, you know, because it was Cardiff International Airport. Probably the last flight we'd have touched down in Cardiff Airport, were you? Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, there's loads of green fields. Where the hell is Cardiff? And we go, you know, we're not in Cardiff, we're in Barry. And we're like, so well, the CF we, though. we wanted to be in and for that two or three minute period we were going have we arrived in the wrong airport brilliant I think a lot of people think that we arrived at the Cardiff airport as well where have I arrived in where do you want to go to guys it's not exactly the uh, epitome of a city no airport is it let's be fair where, where do you want to go to guys I went Mary Street I've been told. It's St. Mary Street. I still remember that to this day. It's St. Mary Street. Fine, take us there. Where's the best place to go drinking? It's to, you know, four 20, young 20 odd year old Irish guys Where go. Have you been? The Prince of Wales. Prince of Wales. Would Prince have been of Wales. Go ask to the test of time. Half past 10 in the morning. Was it even open then? He's not like, yeah. like the days it is now. Yeah. Four lads, f- four big rucksacks dumped. Sat in there all day. It's not like we made, decided let's go and have a little tour. We just sat there all day. Uh-huh. And all night, but there, that's the, for another day. Um, so twenty, the end of twenty twenty two is approaching. It's, it's approaching. What's it been like? 
It's been interesting, better, yeah. Better than 2020 and 2021. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't difficult, though, was it? Wow. Yeah, you're playing Now, that does seem a while back. Now you put it like that, 2020 and 2021. There'll be less COVID in 2022, I think, we've had. We? We'll have a big block that I'll have on the screen now because I've mentioned the C word. But no, it's, it's, been, it's been interesting, yeah. I think turbulent is probably... It's been unstable, yeah. And 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 I get it for those that are un no, uneducated is the wrong uh, phrase. That need to be re-educated word. in terms of especially their money. It's been probably a frightful, fearful, anxious, upsetting year. Yeah, but I don't think anyone's really changed anything, have they? I think twenty twenty three is going to be the time when people are going to have to change things and change the way they do things, and especially with money. I think people have spent more time going, "What am I going to do?" and actually not do anything about it. Still spending like they did, still buying what they wanted to buy, and going, "Well, actually, am I going to afford this?" But actually, we're not actually really doing anything about it. But I guess from a from a businessy personal point of view, we've had a pretty good year. We've won, won some awards, haven't we? Yeah, become chartered individually. And as a firm, you, you chartered firm, chartered finan- fellow, fellow plan, chartered chartered financial fellow planner, planner, and a fellow, fellow. A CII, yeah, certified financial planner, chartered wealth manager. No more financial exams, bang done. There were years and years. Oh, and, uh, I can't even August. think how many exams I've actually done, but um, yeah, I think from. You know, we still do our general CPD and our learnings, but a lot of our learnings now are more about kind of business and how we can really benefit our clients. Um, yeah, we up the ante on video and podcast. You know, we're putting out two a week, and we've been pretty consistent with that for the for the year. The YouTube channel is going well. I I sent uh, a link st- uh, in a WhatsApp group I was in last week, and I sent um, somebody mentioned something, and I said, "I'll oh, have a look at this." And there's, there's eight of us in it. And I don't to know you did that, yeah? Well, yeah, I think that's one thing we have been poor at, which is actually putting out there. You know, we've we produced probably across YouTube and podcasts about 300 episodes, I would say, in total. And hundreds of hours of, of educational... Video, educational video, you know, and, you know and, and, and Chris, who does our editing and all that, has... It's done a done a good job with getting all those things cut up, put together. Um and we're gonna do a lot more of that in twenty twenty three. Um but we'll come to that in a in another one. It's um, amazing. The do you know the, the the papers the trade papers that we we look at and give us, you know, some information and that about the the the, the kings called the FCA down in London and what they're gonna charge for next. But they they've been talking recently about how there has to be a fundamental change in the world of finance and it's going to start kicking in in 2023 and onwards where it's done a way, the old thing of the past is going to be the financial advice and, and the 2023 thing is going to be the the education and um, aligning um, understanding and, and that of people's money and kind of thinking, we're, we're doing that already. Yeah. I think... Um... Yeah, I think we, we've done a lot of that. We definitely touched on it. I think we tested some things in 2022 um, around kind of money management. We run quite a few webinars um, to see what people really want. And I think we've got a good idea on that now. But yeah, but but I, it's gone quick, I would say, as well, 2022. I think we had a lot of plans. I don't know whether we hit them all. But I think we we've done a lot. We we've, we've worked very hard with our clients and are on the financial planning side of our business. I think we've done a lot there. I yeah. think we've got a lot more to achieve. There's a lot more we can do to add more value. There's there's a few points that I think. Firstly, we didn't achieve everything, we almost set out to do this year, and that's not a negative because I think we overstretched our targets so we 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 yeah. hit quite a lot of things that we wanted to achieve but there are a few things and we can chat about them in an, another session about what we, we're going to do in 2023 which we'll bring forward but i don't see it as as a negative because i think we did as as much as we could and i think one of the big things for me is is getting back to the world of finance 
is very simple and far too many people make it very um, scary and try and make it very uh, mm. difficult to understand. And I think we've basically, not in a nice way, dumbed down and talked about it in a, in a normal way, which makes people understand it more and more so that people become, um, what's the term going to go? People become more uh, comfortable yeah. with everything that's going on. Yeah. And that's a, a big thing to do is try and put it in layman's terms simple rather than kind of trying yeah 100 percent. i think and, and i think there'll be a lot more of that to come next year but we're not going to get to that too much now but i think you know this just has challenges it has its successes its failures you know there's been business challenges personal challenges um but that's the rough and the, that's what comes with being a business owner you know you take the rough with the smooth and and you 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 sometimes have to put on a brave face when sometimes it's not that easy to. And but that, that's kind of life in a way, do you know what I mean? There's a lot of things that business owners will probably see this and then people that work in the world of finance will see it even more. But there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background, even especially in our sphere of finance, where you're not firefighting, but new rules, regulations, levies and that come out. And as much as things happened many, many years ago, the the regulator themselves almost seem to be very reactive on something and then throw something out and go, you've got a short time to to do this. And then everyone's you know, yeah. running around the place trying to, to, to make an understanding of what a white paper or whatever it may be, put things in place, see are they the correct things. And yeah, but you have to make an interpretation of it, don't you? They don't give you the guidelines, which and, they and should And still do. go on with your normal job. Hmm. And and still have so much time taken up with all of this. You know, the, the biggest example is during COVID, we had these um, COVID resilience surveys, which yeah. they were sending out every six to eight. Six to well, they eight changed weeks. names twice during COVID, didn't they? They, they, were, they were branded up as one thing and then they're doing it. What are they doing with all that data? They, they'll be doing something with it. But from the point of view of people convinced. talking, you know, understanding us, each time we do it, we have to send the accountant um, the figures for him to calculate a, a profit yeah. and loss, and that, which is which costing us costs every quarter, us, costs us money and, and time. Which, which the FC, you know, the FC costs us enough money as it is. And now it's gone from the COVID res- to a business resilience service. So we're still doing this. Can you imagine what some of these bigger companies who have you know fifty to hundred staff in and having to get these figures quarterly? You know, their accounts can be charging them a few thousand pound each time, and a lot of work involved, doesn't it? So there's little things like that when people think, well, yeah. all you do is you rebalance my ice or you move. It's not yeah. as simple. It is, you know, along with the keeping a business running, as as anyone would be if you're selling a widget um, and making sure your technology is all up to date and making sure you have all the infrastructure in place and making sure you have the annual review reports and complying with um, the FCA regulations of TCF and co- consumer duty and business resilience. There's all that. So... It has been challenging this year, and it does seem that there's more and more um, push down Bureaucracy. from the, the regulator to try and gather more, so, no, to try and gather inf- the same information in different ways from us, which means having to, to set to, up to what end, though? Things. I don't want to get into this, but to what end? I don't see what end. It, I think they're still, they're still missing the mark, you know, with letting some of these bigger companies scam people fold you know which falls on us then to have to pay levies which pays to these when they could have been stopped by a regulator so i i get it they're doing all these service things but the, on the bigger picture are they actually preventing the frauds and the problems which are out there? no they, they aren't and, and the biggest one we know is is uh, british steel and we saw last week with us 49 million of a regress. but i don't think it's just british steel if you look at all the other the, why just british steel there's other defined benefit schemes out there which are exploited i think, I think to that, that's one of the this kind of the main one that they talk about at the moment now we know that yeah, within yeah. the next three to four months we're going to get hit with a levy because the 49 million has to be pumped into that compensation yeah, yeah, yeah. so it does mean unfortunately Regardless of the the fact of you know gas, water, electricity, so whatever it is mm. going up in cost, and, and our costs in the office here going up forty one percent in it, this this yeah, just our running forward. costs alone. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when the levy comes in, our costs for clients, the the end the end result is the FCA is saying you have to treat everyone fairly. But we are going to treat everyone fairly because costs are going to have to rise yeah. to cover the, the new scheme. So 
And yeah. we've had to have that conversation with clients. I mean, that you know, our a, costs have gone up. That's been we've got to, here. You know, we've we've frozen our costs for probably the best part of five years, yeah. really, haven't we? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but now we have to pass some of that on to 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 our clients because you know we we have to run the business, keep the doors open, pay staff, you know, and run a profitable business. Uh, but I do wonder if it does continue like this, whether small films will be able to survive or whether we'll all be sucked into the realm of a, a network or a bigger film, which I don't think is a great client outcome. I don't think because you're just a yeah small cog in a big wheel. Then, do you know what I mean? And, and that's what clients will fall into. I think you'll lose that personal service. But I, I read, you know, when you're talking about that, that, there's a lot of negativity with that. And then people come, they still, they still expect um free they, they say it's not advice but could you recommend and even yesterday i noticed on the the sunday times the there was a guy on there and he was uh, giving his um information on the funds that he has self picked over the last few years he was a um a journalist and he's i think he said this year alone he's lost over six figures on his investments and he's he's picked not fund of funds He's picked specific shares, i.e., you know, Boeing or Kazoo, Lionel. maybe. Yeah, and he. You know, so you bought that. The vast majority yeah. of them, he said, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down. He said, I do get good dividends off this, this, and this one, but overall, um, I have thirteen percent of my uh, portfolio in this fund. I've got seventeen percent in this one, and I'm thinking, no, he's no, he's putting this out on the Sunday Times, which is was a one point two million uh, readers. And are you telling me that that's not advice? I know he's not getting paid for it, but he's telling you what funds he has, mm. what percentage of his overall uh, portfolio, um, and how he thinks they have done in the previous 12 months against a type of benchmark and what he thinks they're going to be like going forward. It's like, yeah, well. th- there's, you, you have to almost, it's going back to the education thing of how, how successful we've been this year. You have to start telling people that's not the way to invest yeah. for the long term yeah. it is diversification it's you know potentially we can have discussions with dfms that come in but it's p- potentially um for the vast majority that don't have huge um wealth passive funds um that you know will track something and not you know three four five singular funds because if something happens again and they go down by 20 percent, you are you're in serious trouble but again, that comes back to the re-education of people that they're needing. Oh, yeah. Because what what your parents and grandparents learned 20, 30 years ago and had an impact on them psychologically, they, they may have said, you know, don't do this type of thing. Yeah. And they'll pass that on to their children. And it, and it goes to two generations. Everyone post-COVID needs a, needs a re-education or a realignment of, um, of how they are to, to look yeah. after their money, which aligns with... Happiness. So that was 2022 then? 2022 in a nutshell. It started like that and it went like that. Yeah. Next year, though, we'll uh, we'll document our journey a little bit uh, more in depth, I think. 